Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over some performance tips for Eater SX2. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, even though it's currently in early access, Eater SX2 is by far the best PS2 emulator on Android. Now, in order to play PlayStation games on your mobile device, you will need a fairly decent CPU. In a previous video, I compared a mid-range CPU versus a higher-end CPU, and the performance difference between the two was pretty incredible. The raw power from the higher-end CPU completely blew the mid-range CPU out of the water. Now, if you have an older CPU, if you have a mid-range, if you have a lower-end CPU, it doesn't mean you can't play Eater SX2, you might just have to try a few performance tricks to get things working for you. Now before I go any further in this video, I want to point out that these performance tips won't be the same for every single device out there. There are a bunch of different phones out there with a bunch of different chips, a bunch of different setups, and they'll handle the emulator different. What works on one phone might not work on another. So you will have to play around with these tips here and find out what works for you. Now, with all of that being said, taking into consideration here, there's a bunch of different phones out there. I know what performance tweaks work on my phone, but I wanted to find out what worked on other people's phones. So what I did was posted a question here on the community tab on this YouTube page. Feel free to check it out. And I asked people what they did to improve performance on their phones. And I got a ton of different answers here. I'm going to try some out in this video and feel free to try it out on your phone. So first up here, we've got a couple of tips from Alex is Awesome. Now Alex is a moderator over at the official Eater SX2 Discord. Alex says, disable texture barriers if you were having problems with Vulkan and you didn't used to have problems with Vulkan. And the second tip here, an extremely important tip, please reset all of your settings after each update. This might fix a lot of performance issues for a lot of people. Resetting your app settings is really simple and straightforward, and there are two different ways you can do this. The first way here is to select Reset Settings from the main menu in Eater SX2. From there, you have two different options, Safe and Unsafe. The second way to do this is to click App Settings, and then in the top right-hand corner, there's a burger menu. You can select Reset to Safe Defaults or Reset to Fast Defaults, which is the same as Unsafe. Choose either one here, they will give you different results. To start out, I'm going to select Safe Defaults and show you how it works. So for the purposes of this video, I'm using a Google Pixel 5 with a Snapdragon 765G processor. We're playing Gran Turismo 4 and we can see it's running right now at about 40% game speed, well, a little bit under 40%. It's not running very fast at all. So if I bring up the settings menu here, click on System and then Disable Enable Multi-Threaded VU1 on my phone, it actually speeds up gameplay and speeds it up quite a bit. We go from about 30% to, well, about 70% game speed, a huge difference. Now on your graphics settings, if you're running into issues with OpenGL, you can always switch it over to Vulkan. If you switch it over to Vulkan though, I would recommend turning on display texture barriers and that might get rid of a ton of graphical issues. Now in the system menu, underclocking might actually help out with performance. EE cycle rate is set to 100% by default but you can change this to 75% or even 60% and that might improve things. For EE cycle skip, it's set to normal as default, but you can put it as a mild underclock for one or moderate underclock for two. I'd recommend mild underclock at number one. Next up here, I'm not quite sure how to say their username, but they say make FMV switch on four by three or any aspect ratio you play it in will make the performance smoother. So I put it in 4x3 mode, it didn't result in any performance gain, but maybe it's something you can check out. Now Daniel states, I found putting audio on desync instead of time stretch actually makes games more playable overall. So for audio menu here, synchronization mode, just turn it to no. For me, this didn't help out, but maybe it will for you. Now someone sent me a direct message here and they wanted to remain anonymous. They said change texture filtering from bilinear to nearest neighbor. I tried that, it didn't help, but maybe it will on your device. Siri Ish recommends turning on the iBit hack from the Advanced tab. On the Graphics tab, Emu Matt says to enable four different settings, GPU palette conversion, preload textures, disable hardware readbacks, and skip presenting duplicate frames. 
This might improve performance, but it also might break some graphics. Lewis suggests running PAL ROMs because they run at 50 frames a second as opposed to 60 for NTSC. And Leon here said the exact opposite. NTSC games work better for him as opposed to PAL, so it might be a case-by-case, game-by-game situation. And last up here, this isn't an emulator setting, it's more of a phone setting. TechDunk says to put your phone to high performance mode if possible. And this will vary from phone to phone. Some phones have it and some don't. On Samsung devices, I think it's under device care and then battery and then it's hidden in there. On this phone here, which is a Red Magic 6R, there's a dedicated app for it. Now as a bonus here, it also helps to close out of every single program you're using on your phone just to help free up your CPU. After fiddling around with a lot of these settings here, I was able to get Gran Turismo 4 running on my Google Pixel 5 at 100% speed. So that's a big thumbs up. At the end of the day here, these settings will vary from game to game. They're not uniform for every single game out there and they're not uniform for every single device out there. You will have to play around with them in order to get things up and running to the way you want. You might be successful and you might not. On top of that, just remember, Ether SX2 is still in early development. It will get better here. We might even get some more performance options. Who knows? Also, a massive thank you goes out to absolutely everyone here who provided some tips on stuff that helped them speed up Ether SX2. I'll leave a link to this community tab in the description below and I recommend checking it out because more than likely there's something here that might help out your emulation experience. Anyways, that is all I've got for this one. Let me know your thoughts about this performance video in the comments below. Did it help you out? Did it not help you out? I'm curious here. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.